So this is chapter five, thermodynamics. Thermodynamics has everything to do with energy and the transfer of energy. Energy is defined as the capacity to do work and transfer heat. And energy is measured in the metric system in something called joules. Joules are symbolized by a capital letter J or a lower letter J. A joule is defined as a kilogram times a meter squared per second squared in terms of units. And so it's a derived unit, and yet you can still put prefixes in front of it, like a K for kilo joule, or like an M, like a milli joule. And so it fits right into the normal metric system, except it's a J, or a J. In the United States, we also measure energy in something called calories calories like the calories on the side of a cereal box or calories that you intake except one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules that's the normal calorie that's written with a small letter c in the dietary world food calories are actually 1000 of these small c calories and they're written with a capital letter c and so when we talk about a dietary calorie, a dietary calorie is equal to 1,000 times 4.184, or 4,184 joules. In the energy world, energy is always known to transfer from hot to cold. Always transfers from hot to cold. And cold is simply just a lack of energy in a particular place. The transfer always occurs via a defined system and surroundings. And many times we define the system in chemistry class as the atoms, molecules, or ions that make up the sample of whatever substance we're studying. The surroundings would then be the container, or the beaker, or the air around it, or the thermometer that goes into that particular system. When energy is given off from the system to the surroundings, it is called an exothermic process and numerically is given a negative number. When energy is taken into the system, it is called an endothermic process and has a positive value. So if energy goes from the surroundings to the system, it's a positive value. When energy is measured at a constant pressure, and we're looking at heat energy in particular, it is known as enthalpy, E-N-T-H-A-L-P-Y. Enthalpy is defined at heat at a constant pressure, and is symbolized by a triangle with a capital letter H. The triangle stands for change, and H stands for enthalpy, or heat at constant pressure. It, too, is measured in joules or kilojoules because it's an amount of energy. In chemistry, we almost always look at heat as the type of energy we use, although there are a few others, including mechanical and electrostatic. But in this chapter, we're going to look almost exclusively at the change or exchange of heat energy. A thermochemical equation or a thermochemical reaction always contains an enthalpy term. By an enthalpy term, we mean one that contains delta H in it. So for example, in this reaction, H2 plus O2 goes to H2O, the enthalpy for the process is a negative 488 kilojoules. This triangle H with a positive or negative sign, a numerical value, and an, a, a, an amount of kilojoules, or the units, indicate that for every two moles of H2 that are combusted or burned or added to oxygen, this amount of energy will re be released. For every one mole of O2, this amount of energy will be released. Or for every two moles of water that are created, this amount of energy is released. Or the opposite. For every 488 kilojoules that are released, you can know that two moles are produced, one mole was reacted, and two moles are reacted. 
So this means many relationships stoichiometrically in the equation are dependent on this delta H or enthalpy term. Some guidelines for delta H are given to us in the textbook. First of all, enthalpy is an extensive property of matter. That means it depends on the amount of substance that you have. So for example, in this equation, if we only had one mole of hydrogen, a half a mole of oxygen, and one mole of water, the enthalpy would be half as much. And so it would be negative 244 kilojoules because we depend on how much we have. And if we have half as much, we have half the amount of energy. Enthalpy for a process is reversible, meaning that if we take this reaction and write it the other way, 2H2O goes to become 2H2 plus O2, the enthalpy now would be exactly the opposite of this reaction. And so instead of negative 488, meaning it's exothermic, it would now be positive 488 kilojoules. So when you reverse a reaction, reverse the sign of the enthalpy. Lastly, enthalpy is state dependent, which means it depends on the state of matter or the state that a substance is in at that time. For example, our reaction, once again, assumes that hydrogen is in its standard form in its gaseous state. Oxygen is in its gaseous form in its standard state. Water is in its standard state liquid form. This gives us an enthalpy of negative 4088 kilojoules. If hydrogen were, for some unknown reason, in its liquid state, like around 2 Kelvin, and oxygen were in its liquid state, and water were in its gaseous state, now the enthalpy would be completely different because the standard or, or, or the state of the substance would be different. Many times we assume that the state of a substance is its standard state, or they are in their standard states. And so we'll see delta H written this way many times with a little circle in the upper right-hand corner. And this little circle means standard conditions or standard states. Standard states for thermodynamics and enthalpy are 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere of atmospheric pressure, and a one mole or one molar solution. That's what we assume for almost all enthalpies that we see, or we correct them for those standard states. And so many times you'll see a little circle or a little degree sign in the upper right hand corner, and that simply means these conditions. How to use thermochemical equations? Well, first of all, let's take and write down this equation of the combustion of methane. Methane gas, oxygen gas in its standard state, carbon dioxide in its standard state, and liquid H2O. And we'll assume that this is enthalpy in its standard conditions, delta H with a little circle up here. And the enthalpy for this process is negative 890 kilojoules. First, is this process endo or exothermic? Well, looking back at your notes, you'll notice that if it's a negative process, it's exothermic. So first of all, this is an exothermic process. And the only reason we knew that was because there was a little minus sign right here. And we know that exothermic processes have a negative value because energy is given off from the system to its surroundings. And these chemicals right here are our system. Let's use this to calculate the heat released if we combust 4.5 grams of CH4 gas. OK. Well, if we combust 4.5 CH4 gas, we're not combusting exactly one mole of this CH4. Because right now, this equation is written for one mole of CH4, two of O2, one of CO2, two of H2O. And this exothermic process would give off 890 for that amount. 
Now we don't have one mole, we have 4.5 grams. So the first thing we need to do is, when in doubt, convert to moles. So take our one, I'm sorry, 4.5 grams, put one mole on the top, 16 grams on the bottom, which I get by adding up one carbon and four hydrogens on the periodic table. One carbon is 12, hydrogen, of course, is one. Once I've converted to moles, now I can use the ratio between methane and the delta H or enthalpy term in the equation. And I can write a fraction or a ratio that puts moles in a position where it's going to cancel and kilojoules is my new set of units because I want to know heat and heat is measured it is a measurement of energy in kilojoules. Once I put my units in a position where they're going to be canceled and my desired units in a place where they'll be the new units, I can now pick the numbers off of the balanced equation. A 1 is in front of CH4, and in front of kilojoules is negative 890. On my calculator, 4.5 divided by 16 times negative 890 should end up with negative 250 kilojoules. So take a look at each of these terms that I did. First of all, notice I converted to moles. That was step number one. Then step number two, after I converted to moles, I took the ratio from the balanced thermochemical equation. One from the coefficient, negative 890 from delta H. Lastly, let's take a look at this reaction in reverse. So let's take this same reaction that I have written down right now. But this time, let's say that we're given that negative 222.5 kilojoules were released. Not negative 890, but negative 222.5. Well, last time I started with a mass and converted to moles. This time, I start with an energy, and I'll need to work backwards to get to mass. And so my first step in this process is to write down my negative 2.5 kJs, put a ratio here, and this time I will put kilojoules in a position where it's going to cancel, and I will relate it to the moles in the balanced thermochemical equation. Now there are negative 890 kilojoules for every two H2Os. Notice they ask for H2O. And so my relationship will be negative 890 kilojoules for every two moles of H2O. Last step after this, I look at the asked for units, and they want to know mass. Mass is measured in grams. So I'll do a last step where I take and convert from moles of H2O to grams of H2O. And for every one mole of H2O, if I add up an oxygen and two hydrogens on the periodic table, oxygen is 16 and hydrogen is 1, there's 18 grams. Multiply these guys together right here, times 2 divided by 890 times 18, and I end up with 9 grams of H2O. Now look at the steps that I did. I got this ratio from the balanced thermochemical equation, negative 890 kilojoules. Notice I put my kilojoules units in a position where it's going to cancel. And my moles I got from the coefficient in front of H2O. And then the last step right here, I just did some converting from moles to grams from the periodic table.